Good morning and welcome to you all on behalf of Burnt Hills United Methodist Church, Pastor Holly and myself, Pastor Doug. We're happy to have you with us this morning and we say thank you for deciding to join us here at Burnt Hills UMC, a place that seeks to welcome everyone on their journey of faith, asks us to come together for worship, to serve, to explore whatever drives you as an individual. Now, before beginning worship this morning, we have a few announcements. The in-person response to worship has been really strong. And a few weeks ago, we had so many, we weren't sure they were all going to fit. So now we're beginning to consider moving to a second Sunday morning service live. In the days ahead, look for an email about a survey on that. And we ask that you please respond so that we understand what people are looking for and how we can best respond to your worship needs. Another announcement is that Halloween is coming. Um, and, but more than that, that we're planning a trunk or treat after worship service that day. So if you're interested in that, if you have children or grandchildren, or if you want to participate as a trunk for them to come to, uh, I ask you to call the office to get some more information I believe we're trying to, as with everything else these days, see who's coming and be prepared for as many folks as we can respond to. And finally, our annual stewardship drive has been getting underway, and we have Commitment Sunday, the day we look to have annual pledge cards returned to us on November 14th. If you would like to make a pledge, but you do not receive one of these cards, in the mail, please contact the office so that we can help you with that before the 14th of November. And now let us begin worship with these words. We may come here for a glimpse of God's glory, but Jesus asks, can you drink the cup that I drink? A cup of struggle and joy, of suffering and hope. It is the fullness of life. We may come to get close to Jesus, but he asks us, can you be baptized with my baptism? It is a baptism into the reign of God, where the Spirit breaks down barriers among all people and creates new relationships. We may come here for honor or fame, seeking to be known as godly people. And again, Jesus challenges us, to become great, you must serve. Serve your friends, your neighbors, the least and the lost. Why have we come? What do we seek? To immerse ourselves in Jesus' struggle for justice and peace, to learn how to serve so that the world may be healed and we may be closer to God. Let us join in hearing and singing along at home, if you wish, with our opening hymn, Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service. Yeah. 
continues us on in the book of Mark. Today we're at the 10th chapter in the 35th through 45th verses. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him, to Jesus, and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He said to them, what is it you want me to do for you? And they responded to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or my left is not mine to grant but it is for those whom it has been prepared. Now when the ten heard that this had happened, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. We give thanks for these words of Scripture and seek the wisdom that they hold. And now let us prepare for young disciples' time as we hear Jesus loves me. disciples who might be out there. I wonder if you were listening when we read 
the scripture reading this morning from the book of Mark, and I wonder if it made any sense to you. Just to kind of recap it, at the beginning, the two brothers say they want to be recognized. They want to share in Jesus' glory and be put at his right hand and his left. Those are positions that say you're important. So they want to be important. They want to be seen as important. But Jesus says to them something. There's all that stuff about, can you drink the cup I drink and be baptized like I am baptized? And what Jesus is trying to tell them is it's not as easy as you think it's going to be. Because he knows what's coming for him and that it's going to be difficult. But then he also tells them something really important that I want you to understand from today. Jesus tells them that in order to be important, you have to work at it. You have to serve other people. That in doing something for other people, that's where you become important in God's eyes. That's where you get to share in the glory that the brothers are thinking about. It's not because somebody says you're great. It's not because you do something great in your world. What comes down to being important is how much you help others, how much you offer of yourself to be the one to get down and scrub the floors. As Jesus will teach his disciples in days to come to wash their feet which is bad enough for us, but think about them who walked around in sandals in sandy, dirty places all the time. Think about those feet. But that's the point of what everything Jesus is saying to them today. It comes down to if you want to be recognized as a great person, you need to serve other people to do things that help them. And in that is where God sees us as being great. And let us have a prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for the opportunities you give us to glorify you by doing things for others. Amen. And let us prepare now for the message by singing our next song, Together We Serve.
Today's message is going to be a little different from most of the ones that you hear. I want to start by asking if anyone has been watching those Major League Baseball playoffs. A lot happening, lots of drama and action. As a Yankee fan, it's hard to bear, for me anyway, that they are out of the playoffs, especially since Boston is still in. But I mention this because I think that this year's Yankee team actually has some relevance to the scripture reading for today from Mark about James and John. And I'll preface this by saying this is my opinion, my analysis of the team, um, but it's what I got as a fan who watched as many games as I could. So these two brothers go to Jesus seeking recognition that they will share in his glory to come, whatever may be. They really don't understand what that glory is going to be, but they know they want to be there. They seek to be recognized and invited to sit on his right and his left side to share with him in whatever that is going to be. When you think about it, they want to be the stars. In baseball terms, they want to be the big boppers, the home run hitters that get the headlines and the interviews. And then when the others hear about their request to Jesus, the rest of the disciples are upset because they want to share in that glory as well. Well, this year's Yankees were kind of like that as I saw it. It was a team that was filled with players who could hit monstrous home runs. Players that often get the spotlight and in any game, it would not be surprising to see multiple long shots, ones that are in the four to 450 foot range or more. And for those of you who aren't baseball fans, that's a long way. But as I watched so many games, it seemed as if almost every player came up to the plate and was swinging like they were trying to hit those home runs. They were looking for that big blast that might win the game and bring glory to the player and the team. So many times it was so frustrating to see them with those big swings. Now, I'll admit, it's exciting whenever one of them would actually connect and there would be some amazing successes at that throughout the year. But not enough to allow them to still be playing here in October. I know this is how the team was built. It's what the management and the ownership expected of them. But they also seem to be missing something. So let's listen again to what Jesus tells his disciples in this reading. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. So what is he talking about? And how does that apply to baseball? Well, what he's saying is that if they, the disciples, want to be considered great and share in his glory, to metaphorically win the game and keep on playing into the playoffs and make it to the World Series, they need to do the little things the humbling things that serve the whole team rather than looking for those big look at me moments when the ball might go so far out of the stadium. They need to care for others to fill the needs that often go overlooked, to be supportive and to prepare the way for something bigger than themselves, for the next thing to come the next batter. Be humble. Serve others. Meet the day-to-day -day needs of those who are truly suffering. Because that's what brings hope and joy to them. Now I hear Jay Jesus saying that big gestures and home runs are great when they happen. But without the everyday needs being met, 
those big things are no more than a bunch of hot air, a flash in the pan, and they're meaningless in the long run. For all the great home runs the Yankees hit coming down the stretch this year, what they needed most but did not get enough of was the little things. Singles. Moving runners from one base to the next with a well-timed sacrifice of oneself. Things that worked for the good of the whole team even if they didn't bring great accolades at the time. These are the things that may not get a player the headline or a highlight video on ESPN. There's no moment of glory, but they are the things that build up the whole body in the long run. For the betterment of the team, the fans, and the community that follows as a whole, it's the little things that need to be done. And in fact, it was that kind of play, that idea of serving others rather than swinging for the fences all the time, that really was present at times this season and that allowed the team to even get to the playoffs at all. And again, now, for anyone that's not a fan, I'll give you a bit of background. The team had a really tough season with many injuries, more than most teams suffer in any year. And that greatly impacted the makeup of who was supposed to be playing. In fact, of the folks that opened the season on opening day, maybe half of them ended up on the injured list for the whole year and were not there to play. At one point, they even had six starters out for an extended period as they were in COVID quarantine or actually sick with COVID. But when all those players went down, when they weren't able to play, an amazing group of replacement players stepped up and filled in the holes. This group of new players were actually misfits, minor league players, second string players, folks that nobody expected to do much, but they came in with that attitude of, they're going to do the job, or next man up, as some would say, to fill in the holes that the team faced. And knowing that they were not likely to hit the long home runs, they played the game differently, doing those little things that the regulars seemed to be incapable of. They hit timely singles. They stole bases. They sacrificed themselves to move somebody ahead and allow the team to score. They did whatever it took to serve the whole body. And the team got the glory and the wins. At one point when all this was happening, they got 13 wins in a row. That's not easy to do in Major League Baseball. It was an amazing run when you could watch this lineup that often had fans saying, well, who is that guy and where did he come from? But they served each other and they won a lot of games when nobody really thought that they would do much more than maybe keep things steady at 500. They won so much that they passed three or four other teams ahead of them during this period. Now, eventually, the big name players got healthy and they came back. And as great as each one of them is individually and what they can do in their spot, as a team, they seem to lose that focus again on doing the little things. They seem to shift away from that mindset of being humble and seeking to do the small things to support the larger whole of serving instead of looking for the big hit. And I started to see those big swings come back again, swings that either missed altogether or were off just a little bit, but it would lead to an easy out. Ultimately, they found themselves out of the playoffs again not because 
the individual players were not good and worthy of some individual glory, but because they just seemed to lose that concept that to be great, you must be a servant, and to be first, you must be slave to all. But it translated into baseball, you got to do the little thing. May Jesus' teaching on being humble and focusing on service rather than on seeking glory touch our hearts and guide our actions in life. May it be that way for each of you, as I hope it is for me. Amen. And let us prepare for a time of prayer now as we listen to our prayer song. My song is Love Unknown. thanksgiving for all the resources that God has put into our world for us to use, to share, for the giving that is done to support the work and the ministries of this church, for the people that make up this body. I give thanks for all of them and ask God's blessing upon all that they do upon whatever funds are given, and upon whatever else is given, in whatever form it may come. The things we do with our hands and our voices, the things we do by sharing our presence to help others. Amen. For prayer concerns this week, Martha continues to ask for prayers for her sister Jean and their adult children, Kim and Wendy and Peter, at the loss of devoted husband and father, Pete. Dale and Holly and family, who many of you know, they moved to Maryland a few years ago, need prayers on the loss of Dale's father, Martin, who many of us also knew. He passed away on October 9th at the age of 89. We ask prayers for our dear friend Shirley, who had to move away a while ago down south, but she's now making plans to return to our area. As she's doing that, she's in the process of addressing some final concerns where she is. We pray for her that those issues go well, that her travel is safe, and that she is once again among us. We ask prayers of healing for our dear friend Jean, who has been moved to Elizabeth Church United Methodist Home in Binghamton after a recent fall. If you would like her new address, you can call the office. 
And we want to keep in our prayers the three parishes in our community that were served by Father Jerry as we all mourn his recent passing, and especially those at Our Lady of Grace, Immaculate Conception, and St. Joseph's. Pete asks for prayers for his son, Luke's father-in-law, Steve, and for Steve's wife, Cindy, as Steve deals with having some serious health challenges. And we want to continue in our prayers for Dottie and for Eric and for Sandy as their health challenges and their life situations continue. Prayers are also appreciated for Kathy and her family as her mom faces serious health issues. And finally, Libby and Tom thank us for all the prayers that were given as they grieve the loss of Tom's mom. We want to continue to pray for them and that they find healing and strength in this difficult time. Now let us take a moment of silence as each of us lifts up those prayers that we hold in our hearts. Gracious and loving God, we have shared names today aloud and silently of our loved ones, of our friends and neighbors who are in need for some reason. We ask that your healing touch surround them, that they know the peace of your presence in their lives, that those who are caring for them have the wisdom to move them forward. For those who have suffered loss, we ask your strength as they mourn in these difficult days. We know that you are fully aware of each of these requests before we even say them aloud. And yet still we add our voices, hoping that those who are named, know how much they are loved. Almighty God, we ask these things in a world that is filled with turmoil. And yet at the same time, we have hope. Hope that better days are coming, that COVID numbers are falling, at least in some places. We have hope that new vaccine regimens may help continue to keep people healthy. We have hope that your world will someday shine in your glory even more than it does today. That more and more souls will open their hearts to seek peace, to seek serving others, to seek being your children than they do seek glory for themselves. Give us the strength to be baptized with the baptism of Jesus, to share in the cup that he shared, and to be willing to lower ourselves to serve as he has told us we should. And let us join now in those words that have come down from him for us to share each day. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us join now in our closing hymn this morning, We Are the Church. each other, to lift up those in need, because we know that that is God's call for us, that it is Jesus teaching for us, and that the Spirit will fill us and guide us as we go out into that world. Amen. Amen.